Hello there, thanks again for watching this uh, recording. Uh, we're working with Digital Sojourner and as you'll probably be aware we're working our way through 1 Corinthians and we're in chapter 5 and uh, these are quite difficult verses, not, not necessarily just to understand but difficult in the sense of the, the gravity and the seriousness of the issues that they're talking about. But let me read them to you. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and it says here in verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, for ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now just a little background, bear in mind that Paul the Apostle is writing to the church in Corinth, and he's dealing with issues that have been brought to his attention and issues that the Spirit of God has put upon his heart. And in this chapter, he's dealing with a major issue of moral sin. And he's dealt with that in the first five verses, and you need to listen to the previous recording to get a gist of just how he handled that. He is still dealing with it, but he's, he's dealing with the principle of leaven and of sin. Here we have... Uh, in verse number six, he says, your glorying is not good. They were boasting. They were boasting about the fact that they, um, I don't know how they were putting it, whether they were boasting in their tolerance or whether they were boasting in their liberty or their freedom. But Paul says your boasting is not good. And he's really making the point that uh, he, he uses the idea of yeast in a loaf of bread or in some type of uh, bakery product. He says, know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So the idea is he says that dough actually is permeated by the leaven and it gets right through and the whole purpose of leaven is to affect and to influence everything. And the point that he's making in this section is a little sin. They may have minimised the reality of this sin, but sin itself is destructive and damaging and will affect the church, the whole church, not just the individual who's committed sin. and um, The whole church will be affected by the sin of the individual. So he says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now, the idea of leaven is picked up in Scripture in different places. The Lord Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16 the Lord Jesus spoke about the Pharisees and he says that they should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees under the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So you see there the Lord Jesus using the idea of leaven in relation to bad teaching that affects the way a person lives. The Apostle when writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 he talks there and he says be not deceived Evil communication or bad doctrine corrupts good manners. Doctrine affects behaviour. So there's a principle here that is being stated. That the way a person behaves, or sorry, what a person believes will affect what uh, the way a person behaves. In Galatians chapter 5, the same idea is picked up here. Again, the apostle is writing to the church in Galatia. And he's dealing with the false doctrine of legality and going back to the law. And he says to them there, This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So in other words, this principle runs through, number one, that leaven is seen in these verses as teaching about what is evil, wrong doctrine. In the section we're in, it's evil practice, sinful practice. But in both counts, it's described as leaven that permeates and affects the whole. The lump of dough is affected completely by that little bit of leaven. And so sin in a local church affects everybody. And that is the challenge of this section. He says to them, your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Now, what's the response to that in the local church? Well, he's already taught them, but he's going back over it again, as often as the style of teaching in Scripture and in modern life. He's told them that they need to discipline that person. They need to be put out of fellowship. They need to be put into the sphere where Satan operates to deliver such a one to Satan. So he says to them in verse number seven, purge out, therefore, the old lump, uh, the old leaven. 
that you may be a new lump. In other words, move away, put that person out of fellowship, um, deal with the sin so that there is cleansing and so there's separation and so that as a result of their repentance, they may be recovered and brought back in. That's a different issue. But here he's saying, put them out so there might be purity in the local church. So he says, purge out there for the old leaven, clean it out so that you may be a new lump. Uh, and he says, as you are unleavened. In other words, he's using this picture in the Old Testament of leavened and unleavened bread and that which doesn't corrupt. And he's saying that the, the church should be a place maintaining purity, maintaining holiness. That really is very important. That means that the elders in the church should know the lifestyle of the believers. It means that we should be careful to maintain purity and holiness. And that's got to be lived according to the, the, the guidelines of the New Testament. So he says... The purpose is that you would remain pure and unleavened as a church without corruption. And he says, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for the very purpose of pr producing a people that are pure, a people that are clean. I mean, you go to the passages in, in Ephesians and chapter 5, when the Apostle is writing there about the church. He's dealt with moral um, morality and sin in that context. But in that passage, it says the Lord Jesus that he gave himself for the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of water by the word. So in other words, the church is meant to be clean. It's meant to be pure. It's the outcome of the work of Christ. Christ, our Passover, and he's using unleavened bread. Remember, in the Old Testament, there's the feast of Passover. There's a feast of unleavened bread. He's saying, Christ, our Passover, the lamb has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, so he's using the analogy, let us live this out, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. I'm not asking you to go back to the old, but I'm neither I'm asking you to live in a world of sin, uh, not to live in it, but allow sin to permeate the church, not with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Now that's very, very important, isn't it? Malice, that deep-seated hatred, wickedness, that, that is uh, entirely wrong, and, and opposing the things of God as opposed to righteousness. But they have to keep the feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The believers should be those who are pure, those who are sincere, those who are clean, those who live and practice the truth. Now those are uh, difficult lessons, but lessons are really important for the church today, for every local church, every local assembly. They need to be handled as situations arise, they need to be dealt with by the elders in a local church. There needs to be an observance of the truth. There needs to be an adherence and obedience to the truth. We mustn't run away from that. And these things are sometimes hard to handle. And as we deal with this passage, and as we have dealt with it, we trust that God will give us help to live these things out in our daily lives and experience, and especially in the life of the local church. Thank you again for watching this.